Today I want to talk to you guys about what's possible on a quarter acre farm in high rotation growing and I'm going to mention a little workshop that I teach at the end. I'm going to tie it to this a little bit but I'm going to show you two farms that are a quarter acre in size, talk about how much land there is and uh, you know what's possible on that land. So first of all, the first one we're going to look at is actually just three of my plots. So my farm has six plots totaling a third of an acre in production. And then I'm going to show you my friend in New Zealand, Yotam's farm. I did a video with Yotam before. Click up here if you haven't checked that one out. Really inspiring. They're doing 80 grand on a quarter acre, which is totally doable. And in fact, I've done a lecture on that. It's called 80,000 on a quarter acre. I will have the link below if you want to download that. It's in my digital tools package um, that comes with my book. So check that out if you want to watch that. But um, let's talk about the space first of all. So let's look at my farm. So these are three of my plots and all three of these combined total a quarter acre around. An, act, an exact quarter acre is 10,890 square feet. These plots come to about 10,000. And the first one uh, up top, Lawrence Avenue, that's my flagship plot. I was there yesterday. That has 12 50 foot beds at 30 inch and it has um, two greenhouses on it that are 34 feet long with four beds in each. So that total plot I'm counting at 5,000 square feet. The plot below it on the bottom left is around 20, it's around 2,700 square feet because it has 11 50 foot beds plus three, actually now we made four, it has four 33 foot beds. So it's around 25, 2,700 square feet. And then the plot on the bottom of it, on the bottom right, is our new plot that's gonna have 11 uh, 50 foot beds. 48 actually, but let's just say 50. So what I've done is I've calculated the total linear feet. So linear feet is what I say when I'm using measurements of a bed. So our beds are always 30 inch wide and that's the same for Yotem's farm here, uh, which is, Yotem's farm is this one, this image here. And um, so a, 30 in, uh, a linear feet means that a 50 foot bed is 50 linear feet. So what I've done is I've converted the linear feet because it's hard for me to calculate the distance between Yotam's beds. I don't know that, but I do know his bed lengths. Um, so I want to go on linear feet. So I'm just basically going to convert a quarter acre down to linear feet. So on my farm, that quarter acre of those three plots converts into 1,972 linear feet, meaning that when you combine all the lengths of my beds, you get 1,972 linear feet. So let's go over to Yotam's plot and look at his. So the, the, I, I've kind of divided his plot into four segments. The one on the, the left long diagonal beds, those are 50 feet long, and he's got 16 of them, so that's 800 linear feet. Then next he's got the segment above it where those beds are running on contour, that's nine 34, 30 foot beds, 270 linear feet. Then he's got his strawberry patch over on the, bo the, uh, the right side running diagonally. Those are seven 50 foot beds, 350 linear feet. And then he's got his curved beds down there, which are kind of hard to measure, but they're more or less the same square footage as the strawberries, plus a little bit more. So I calculate that at about 400. And then he's got his greenhouse, which has four 40 foot beds at 160 linear feet. So altogether, Yotam has 100 or, or 1980 linear feet, so only eight more linear feet than mine, according to my calculations. And I have spoken to Yotam about his farm, and he says it's exactly 0.28 acres, so it's just a tiny bit over a quarter acre, but, but not that much more. And, and when you look at the two pictures, you can really kind of see if my three are a quarter acre, you can look at his and go, yeah, that makes sense, because I have more 50 foot beds than he does. He's got some more shorter beds in his areas. I have more greenhouses than he does. Um, and so when we're talking about his farm, the quarter acre is just the blocks of production. We're not counting the forest. We're not counting the pasture. We're not counting where his house sits. We're counting the production area. So that's a quarter acre. Okay, so I think I've made that pretty clear and proved that pretty well. But now I wanna talk about 
what can be produced on a quarter acre. And so a lot of people actually have a quarter acre. When you look at uh, peri-urban areas in North America or even suburban areas, people can get a quarter acre of land really easily. Even if you're urban like I am, like I'm low density urban, but my house lot is actually a quarter acre in size. So I'll put an image of there from the drone shot. My, my lot is a quarter acre, so I'm not farming a quarter acre because I've got the house there, I've got my patio, greenhouses are sitting on that, my carport, but the lot itself is a quarter acre. So a quarter acre of land isn't that hard to find. And the key to maxing out a quarter acre is getting as much production on those beds as possible. And so in my book, I write about this, I call it high rotation. That means that on those beds, we're only gonna put crops that grow fast, have a high density per square foot, have a high yield per square foot, and we can sell at a reasonable price per pound, and are in demand. So that's actually what I call the CVR. I did a video on what makes a crop profitable. You can click up here to check that out. Um, and th but that's the basic concept there. So on, on a quarter acre, if you wanna make $80,000 on a quarter acre, you're gonna grow crops that are in high rotation. And so these are called quick growing crops. They grow fast. It, the way I calculate it is that they're mature in 60 days or less. So you can ach achieve that maturity of those crops by using season extension like caterpillar tunnels or poly low tunnels. But the key is you wanna have a crop in and out of the ground within 60 days. You know, if it's a cut and come again crop like some types of lettuce, that's okay. As long as you're getting your first cut by 60 days and then you've got some cuts thereafter, you know, the total lifespan of that crop might be 80 days, but you started harvesting it after 60. That's what's important there. So when we're really talking about high rotation planting, we want to get four rotations of crops on each one of these beds throughout the season. So some beds might end up being six, some beds might up end, end up being two, but the average is going to settle around four rotations per bed. So on my beds, and, and, and a lot of Yotam's beds here, a 50 foot bed at four rotations, I calculate can average $1,600 per season. So that means that on a 50 foot bed, we're getting an average of a $400 total harvest from that bed, so uh, from that crop. So that, that could mean that it was um, lettuce that was harvested a few times or a bed of radishes that was cropped out once and then it was replanted again. It doesn't really matter, it's all about the average, if we can achieve that average. Because some crops are far more, like for example, my Salanova lettuce, one bed of Salanova lettuce sometimes makes $1,600 on its own. But the averages are important because sometimes you're gonna have some crop failures, you're gonna have some pest problems, you're going to have some germination problems. You know, there's all kinds of problems we have on a farm, but it's really all about calculating the average. So if you wanna grow crops like radishes, turnips, leafy greens that would include things like lettuce, spinach, arugula, mustard greens. In the summertime you can grow baby beet greens, uh, baby chard. The basic idea is baby crops. Um, you know, tomatoes can fit into that to some degree, especially if you can interplant them like I, how I do in my greenhouse. I'm really maximizing out my square footage of land because I've got a lettuce crop that I'm harvesting for two or three times with the tomato interplanted, by the time the lettuce is done, the tomatoes are almost ready to pick and that's exactly what's happening right now in my greenhouse. So that's really what it's all about if you wanna max out a quarter acre. You know, growing things like potatoes, cabbage, winter squash, broccoli, uh, cauliflower, cor forget corn, don't ever go corn on a market garden. Um, those crops you don't wanna grow. You wanna focus on the fast growing, high yielding, um, high price per pound crops, that's really how you maximize it. So I'm gonna leave it at there. The link below for my, for my digital tools package that has a lecture that I do called 80,000 on a quarter acre is there. And in that video, I basically detail an exact farm. I just lay out a bunch of beds. It's all on, on these maps that I use and I say, we're gonna plant these beds at this time and then we're gonna harvest these beds and we're gonna replant these beds. And I basically lay out an exact farm plan for most of the season to show you this is what it looks like to do this kind of thing. If you're gonna rotate beds over and over again and you wanna start making money right out of the gate by overwintering, using poly low tunnels, I basically show 
how it's done because now you can take that information and apply it to your situation and basically just do the same thing on your farm. So I hope you guys found that helpful. I hope that clears up the quarter acre issue with Yotem's farm because a lot of people were asking about it and saying there's no way that's a quarter acre and I assure you it is. Talk to you guys later. Bye.